um, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. I hope you had a very good break. I heard that the pastry was very delicious. So if you are um, still hungry, maybe give you one minute to go and grab one of the pie <laughs> and then come back to this room so you won't be hungry while listening to our distinguished keynote speakers. And um, I can see that you have started to post. Well, as I mentioned, during our keynote sessions, if you have um, opinion or you have questions, please feel free to just tap on the plus sign on the bottom right, and then you can post your question or your opinion. Please kindly mention your name, your affiliation, and then you can start posting. Okay, if you post, I will approve your post, and then it would be displayed on the screen in no time. Okay, let me double check. All right, right now we have also photos. Wow. <laughs> you are like a um, fish. I release the fish to the pond, and you can swim immediately. See, this is the power of using digital tool. And people who are watching us online, you can also participate. Once again, um, the link, the QR code is this one. The link is bit.ly slash IEC 2019 BOARD board, or lowercase bit.ly slash IEC 2019 BOARD board, lowercase. Or if you would like to use QR code scanner, you can scan now. Okay, I can see people keep posting. Hello, everyone. Enjoy TCU IEC from Ajahn Pen Patra. Thank you so much. All right. Now we got everyone back. Okay. We haven't lost any life yet, <laughs> so that is very good. So what should be next, Kap Ajahn Tai? Next will be a keynote uh, speech from the two distinguished um, keynote speakers. Um, first keynote speaker will be Professor Dr. Anne Shi Liu. Um, please allow us to take this opportunity to introduce him first. All right. Um, it will take me normally two days to introduce him, <laughs> but please allow me to make a short version. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay <my laughs> professor Liu is a distinguished chair professor of the Feng Xie <laughs> University of Taiwan. He presently is the president of the Chinese Open Education Consortium, which supports institutional collaboration in open education. He was the director of the project of the promotion of MOOCs of Taiwan Ministry of Education for four years. Um, now he leads the digital sprouting project for Taiwan Ministry of Education for integrated STEAM development and application with e-learning for K-12 to universities in Taiwan. So this is his short uh, profile in <laughs> in uh, only one minute. All right. So please, ladies and gentlemen, today Professor Lu is going to share with us national secret of Taiwan MOOC. So without further delay, please join me to give him a big welcome. <laughs> Hello, good morning. That's, uh, I'm, I'm glad to uh, be part of this IEC 2019 and also join with you to imagine MOOCs for all. So today we're talking about MOOCs. Uh, I believe MOOCs has been with us for at least eight years. Uh, in the beginning form, you can see the biggest class, it was like 160,000 students in one big class. And uh, the MOOCs keeps on evolving, changing. I can't say that it becomes a big monster, but at least that uh, scatters around the world, thousands of thousands of book courses millions of millions of people joined the, the class 
And that's here we are. So my, my point is to talk about the Taiwan MOOCs, but, but I believe the Taiwan MOOCs also moves along with the trend, with, with, with the, all the, 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 what's happening in the world. So it's also a changing process, just like the, uh, the, the, the keynote presented by, by the minister saying what's happening to the Thai MOOC, all the different principles, policies, and the, 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 the following trends. <clears throat> So before I talk about something in detail, uh, let's, let me see. Let's check the original form of, of MOOCs. Uh, the MOOCs was an open enro enrollment uh, a, a policy. That's why you have millions and millions of people participate. And mostly are free, although it's not the case anymore. Second is self-paced. Self-paced in the sense of that either it's a complete self-paced, you know, throughout the course, or you are given a fixed schedule, so you're self-paced within that class restriction. So that's also self-paced. But how, however, you can take the course anytime, any place, with that kind of a restriction. The courses mostly are open contents. Open contents are not because of the copyright, but but you can have open access. You can access the content anytime. Sometimes you can even download the contents, it's open. And of course, the course is managed by the instructors, students, hopefully as many as the TAs to support. And lastly, the MOOC's learning experience is sometimes different. It depends on the instructor's charisma, the teaching style, or the peer review between the students, or sometimes even the very fast, quick response that you can enhance your competitiveness. So these are the, the, the MOOCs that uh, we had imagined, say, many, many years ago. And these are the two curves that I, I believe you've seen from web courseworks. It shows the com comparison in MOOCs between 2018 and 2019. You can see, uh, I, I might need this. Can I see this? Yeah. The MOOCs. And last year, the MOOCs almost is like a plateau production. That's a very mature, you know, stabilized production and applied everywhere, along with the supporting technologies. For example, uh, virtual reality, the AI, and uh, gamification, gamification, and some other supporting technologies. Then, what are happening in, in 2019? All of a sudden, the MOOCs takes a backseat. It's not say it's not uh, there. However, there are other technologies which is supporting technologies that are coming up and become more and more popular or more important. For example, uh, simulation, virtual reality, learning analytics, and a lot of other things. So these are the things that becomes even more noticed and they would be added to the support of, of MOOCs. So you can see the, 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 the changing patterns uh, of the MOOCs, along with a lot of the uh, supporting parameters that uh, makes it happening. So here we go. I'm going to ask again. After so many years later, that is the MOOCs massive open online courses. Is that still massive? I can't say the 160,000 phenomena will be no more, but it's probably the case. And we're going to ask. Is the, are the courses very open? You see, a lot of uh, courses are paid courses. You have to earn your degrees. You may be open for the first week, but not the second week. You may be open for the first class, but not the second or more advanced courses. So what's the definition of open? But those are the things because we're moving around, because most getting more and more, get, need a lot of uh, support and that's going to change. I can't see that's a business model changing, but just things, that's the, the reality. <clears throat> so what's up? I'll, I'll start the talk by talking about some of the support to make a MOOC better. And with that, a better MOOC, then we see how we can push the either Taiwan MOOC or Thai MOOC or MOOCs everywhere. Second is that, the, the first is that the 
uh, pay courses are more and more because you need support or you need a personal touch so you have your, your assignments are personal graded. Because as I said, if the course is no longer massive, we're, not, we're talking about if 1,000 people class, will, would you call that massive? I think it is. If it's a very, very specialized class with hundreds of students, is that massive? It is massive because you have to take care of everyone and that's gonna, gonna be a matter of business. So the, 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 since the, 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 the class size is no longer a matter, so we, when we talk about completion rate, Remember the completion rate? Say only 10% complete the class. That's no longer the issue. We don't talk about that. Because if you want to pick a class that's meaningful to you, you're going to go for it. You're going to go to completion. So, so, and so that's why I said the either is the, uh, degree-based MOOCs courses, paid specialization courses, and they, that, those are with a special target, and you go for it. So then, then, if that's the case, you really need all the support. You cannot just do that by the machine, by autom automation, everything. And those are not, I can't say inhuman, but you just don't feel it. I, I remember uh, Professor Sh uh, Xue, he told me that he taught the, 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 uh, the MOOC course one, once, twice, but all of a sudden he feels lonely. Gosh, how come I don't see students, you know? All those students are online and getting less and less. They have their own, you know, domain of uh, communication. And if that's the case, I believe in teaching and learning. That's a mutual feeling, mutual benefit. And that's, that's not just an art and also a science. So that's, that's what we call the MOOCs. So, so the issue I'm trying to emphasize that the MOOCs from now on, I believe we should be emphasizing on online activities. You know, whether it's, a, it's an artificial way, a community way, or a personal way, but that's the online activities should be more emphasized within the MOOCs courses because the size is, 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 is not an issue, uh, the, the communication is an issue, and there's a lot of other things involved. MOOCs is not just a theory. You know, you, you watch the video. You, you really need some hands-on experience, especially some designated field, you know. So if you cannot go to the real lab, a real factory, then at least a virtual hand, hands-on experience is needed. And now, of course, the AR, VR, and a lot of other technology will support, and that's gonna be part of the MOOCs, official MOOCs, that has to be there. But the, the, of course, the AR, VR, their technology still be changing, make it more convenient, more uh, economy, you know, it's a simple way of, of, of doing it, but that's, that, 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 that's there. And when we talk, if that's the case, we generate a lot of learning data, and learning data still at its, its, its you know, original form. The lot of effort should be put into it, although we say AI effort, IoT effort, a lot of things, but the learning data should be explored more, and there are, active, there are activities it's not just by uh, some, 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 some product, but rather how that can, can tie to the, the, the MOOC platform, and that's very important. As I said, the, the video clip is not the only thing. You really want to have some extended uh, reading, listening, you know, the, 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 the watching, to, to everything. So OER, as compared to open access with the, the copyright, and th those, those things, the OER should be getting more and more, and that become a trend, and that should be part of the MOOC class, so just like your reading material, and that should be part of it. But using OER is not a, is not a simple way, because just like it, you, when you Google something, can you put Google something, put it in your textbook, and that's, that's another issue to, to explore. As, as we said, if things are getting more and more involved, a lot of peripheral systems are combined, then it's not just a matter of say, this is a course, hey, talk to your instructor, talk to your teacher. No, there has to be a organization effort, a joint effort to put all those into, in, into effect. So it's become a bigger, bigger, just like a time move. The, the government comes in, universe comes in, you know, there are governing agencies and those things to make sure the, the MOOCs are going into the, the, the right direction. And if, if, if we're talking about learning the MOOCs and a lot of other supporting uh, stuff, then, you know, the, the, the overlay between different uh, pedagogy things 
become blurring and blurring, and eventually the MOOC, you, you, you see MOOC as, 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 as the, the, the main host and combined with other things or vice versa. So the blended learning or blended teaching and that will be, be the way that we will be seeing coming come going. So let's, let's go back to a little bit, see the MOOC development process. You start with your design, then you put it into, into production, then you manage the class. And once you have a class, then you have, uh, the, uh, you, you have the assessment either, say, before or during or after the class. Then you collect a lot of the data, you try to put it into use by the instructor, by the students themselves, or even by the institution. So, so, and then the, the cycle comes back with another class, another series of class and, and, and other things. Then you're accumulating the experience. So that's the, so talking about the instructional design. I'm sorry, oops. The instruction, if you have a full blown MOOC courses, then you say, because the, 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 the different situation or different pedagogy, a uh, learning uh, teaching style, then you say, hey, we're still a MOOC course. We're MOOC based, but that's gonna be applied to different situations. For example, uh, distance learning. For example, flip the classroom. For example, OCW based learning. That still can be MOOC based. And we're talking about the SPOC for business specialized the, 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 the courses. And also with that, let me see here. The mobile learning and micro learning, that becomes a trend because you just don't have enough time to, to, to spare to study the whole, whole full span of, of, of courses. And those are the things that involve with the instruction design. And that makes that uh, sometimes it's just not a make a course. You try to generate enough different forms to apply, to fit into different circumstances. For example, if we have a given MOOCs, then we say this is learning. This is learning if that's a, is a full blown, full semester course, but I still want to make that to be a MOOC, then you, see, you may have to combine several MOOCs together. Or you try to make a, a lot of more experiments, a lot of a virtual uh, reality, the, the, the labs, so that you can span the learning or, 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 or the, the, the practice within the class, make the, it's a six weeks course, but then I have a several classes, several labs, and make it to be a distance learning that you still earn your, your, your credits, that may be a three credit hours. So, so, so distance learning is still based on MOOCs. If this is a, you use your mobile device, say we want to encourage the, 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 the communication between the, 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 the students or the, the TAs, then all the messages, all the material you want to change on your line, on your WeChat, or on your uh, the other uh, social softwares. And do those are the things, I'm sorry, this is supposed to be this, uh, too quick, Cause for the, for the flip, flip classroom. So you try to fit a course into a, a, the, 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 the mobile or, or cell phone the, the device, then the design or the content itself, maybe you, you may have to redesign it. OCW, OC, the can take it self-paced. No matter how long that is, you can read it, take it anytime you, you want it. And how about the MOOCs? Of course, you want it, the, the MOOCs kind of restricted, but not, not anymore. They, you can have some courses that follow the OCW way. So you can have both the benefit of it MOOCs and OCW, it still say, O the uh, MOOCs based OCW teaching technology. This is, goes too fast. And for the business competition, and of course you have say a, a company they want to have their own specialized MOOCs only for their employee for their for their for their personnel, and that's that's what the MOOCs are. And those are different applications with specialized even platform, and that's MOOCs, but. The, the, the target is so clear, it's not for general public. So these are the forms, different forms, all MOOCs based instruction design and that you have to fit from one original form into different applications. And speaking of a micro learning, then you have a full blown say a, a textbook, the, 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 the MOOC, then you say I have to make that into many, many even smaller knowledge points 
so that it combined together is it's, it's a it's a, a, a work, and you might have to reproduce it. In, in fact, we did that. We have a course that teach you MOOCs on MOOCs, how to design a MOOC using the MOOC idea. Then, then, then say, oh, there's a lot of uh, small, small experience or, or, or skills. Then you split that into more and more. But then you have to produce their own individual clips and make this so there's a lot of us points and small points. And so we did a project by uh, National Tsinghua University. They generate the knowledge map of a complete MOOC course with different uh, knowledge points. A different color, for example, the red color means this section has not started yet. And for the green, green, green dot, it says the students performing well on these knowledge points. For the yellow, yellow points, it's, it's, it's okay. It's going on the way. All right, then in the overall, for this week, this week, this is a yellow dot saying, this week, the performance of this week of particular students or particular section, and that's just okay. So you pretty much can control the progress of, uh, of, of all the participants within this piece of work. <coughs> yeah. And if you, once you grasp that uh, knowledge points, then another, the, the university produces another tool saying, I need an AI tour, tutor. The AI tutor knows these, the participants' progress, and you can notify or introduce more, more uh, uh, material to, to the students so that I can proceed further on. And those are by, by, by the technology, say, the AI tutor. And that's another uh, application of the, the, the MOOC content versus the knowledge map and along with the AI tutor. Talking about enhanced online communications, then the virtual labs is there. Virtual labs either is a simulation, there are many, many, many uh, different uh, labs, but for the lab, it's a very specialized area. It's not saying ask someone to produce all kinds of different areas of uh, applications. It must be individual, say, a, any instructor with a specialized knowledge that produces own. So the common platform of producing this lab is essential. It becomes a crowdsource that everybody joins in. But this is important. But once you have there, that can be shared by all the people. For the real virtual environment, the AR and VR comes in. Here's an example that uh, produced by, by, uh, by, by uh, another university in Taiwan. That they use a DIY, uh, just a box, boxes. Use that as a, as a, as a camera or the, 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 the glass. And uh, to do that, then they have the they have this, uh, use the, 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 the mobile device, talk to the desktop to see all the variations, what's happening in the, 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 the course environment. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm to, supposed to point where? Oh, here. Uh, can I, how, how, do, how, do, how to start this video? Hello? Uh, I'm sorry, it's not the next. Okay, this is another lab for the for the VR that uh, uh, it's a oh here we go using the 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 the, the, the mobile device to to do a three presentation or animation of that uh, particular body part the hip curves hip curve and so that that can can I can I do that okay so that's that's the 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 uh, for medical applications then. Another one is this is the what's happening in the one of the university in Vietnam that produced by, by, by Taiwan University that uh, you have a factory wiring circuit. Then use that uh, the the people, the student will see this is two hands. Try to wire this this, this part and use this hand to control. See this is a shape here. Make sure that you are you are there. And there's a global view of the the board. And then this is the, the micro part, and try to combine the ingredients too. So you can have a you know 3D or in-depth uh, control of the, of the environment. But th th that's just saying saying that the interaction between the real and uh, the virtual world, and that be part of the course itself, and that's very very important. That's another way. And for coding, we're saying that everybody should be able to code, no matter you know what discipline you are in. 
And the coding here is just a, another example. I know there are some, some auto, automated you know, code checking uh, software, but this is a, a, a one of the, I think, uh, example that uh, uh, the, um, I should use this, sorry. That uh, the, the instructor put out the question, then the student should put the code into it. And the software that is just, just immediately check the code and get back to the students. And the, the student can recode or check, you know, uh, the, 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 the modify the, the, the code and resubmit it again. You can try it once, twice, 100 times, make sure you understand it. So that's the, the inter interactive process within the, 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 the uh, coding effort to tie them all together. That's what we're doing here. That uh, we're talking about online activities. We try to encourage that. So you have a fixed open edX, open EDU environment, and that's the core. But a lot of activities are happening within the course Then you need to combine the labs, as I just said. Whether it's a, it's a, it's a fair lab, fine. All the labs we, we, we design ourselves, you need to communicate with the, with, with, with the host. The AR VR too, whether you're in a factory or, 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 or wherever you are, you need to control that. And for the coding effort, the, 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 the you design, you're, you're learning the coding also. And these are three peripheral you know, uh, components or, 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 or system. They should be part of the OpenU. It's not just the link, but the rather very, very, very strict links so that put the, even the grades, the interaction, everything, so make sure that all these points along with the open EDU, that's a complete system. Then all the data, data generated from there also passed back to the open EDU. Then you can have an overall system. You have the full control of the knowledge and the further action later on. And that's what it is. And this is the, 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 the integration I'm talking about. And if you have the data now, so you, had, you need to do the, you know, the learning analytics. We did some experiment that uh, say, if we have the data, can we judge by the data how good or how bad that uh, the students or the, the instructors interact with, the, with, with the, the, the students? So we, 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 we did a model, we, we, we get the data, we set up some uh, transition graph, then try to reduce it, then come up with a feature state. Once you have the feature state, then we apply along with the click streams, apply the machine learning, then come up with the predictive models. We can predict, say, from the past two semesters and we're coming to the third semester. We say the performance of this class is that we can check by the unit, by the weeks, or even by the semester. Then at different times, we can feed the prediction model into the, 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 the time and make sure that uh, the entire class is just make it, marching it all the way to, to the end. And all the behavior that we can introduce based on either it's a behavior engagement or emotional behavior, the, the, the engagement or cognitive engagement and put into that. So, uh, so let's see. So this is the dashboard uh, of the system. And on the dashboard, the, the, the student can see who, 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 who's on the system, how many courses you're taking, and these are the listing. However, there's a course listed as need to improve the engagement. Either some of the videos are not watched completely, or some of the quizzes is not satisfactorily you know, checked, and this way. And that learning analytics will automatically will feed into this column, then send it back to the students so the learner, learn, learn analytics from the past history will, can tell the instructors or the TAs and along with the student to work together and make it to be active learning process. And that's what the dashboard is. Mm. Uh, to know more about learning analytics, we do annual hackathon. And hackathon that uh, uh, each year there's a different, different uh, you know, problem set uh, make sure the, the team and the, the whoever in charge of the team knows more about the learning analytics. And these are the, 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 the themes. Uh, so uh, the last point I'm trying to make is the OER. So this is, should be part of the, the course itself. You know, but searching the OER really, that's not an easy job. See, the, 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 I know, Thai, Thai, you know Thailand, Thai has a, an OER. 
uh, I saw the, the, the message, Netherlands has an OER. Uh, uh, US is trying to push OER all through primary schools, primary school up to the, 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 the colleges. OERs are everywhere, and that should be part of the learning material, and that should be part of the, the MOOCs as well. So we implement a system that uh, uh, can take the, first analyze all of the OER sites, hundreds, hundreds of thousands, of them, put into, extract the features, and put into a normalized form. Then the user will can set up a few keywords, and then eventually query OER knowledge along with the ontology then uh, get the back to the results. So the, the, the process is, two, is dual. One is data collection, the other one just the, the, the query. Say, another thing, we put all of the Taiwan MOOCs as OERs. The, since it's, it's really, uh, it's, uh, I can't say they're just free, that's uh, open access. So we consider uh, the video clip and everything, that's also part of OERs. So you can use OER or the video clips as a support for another MOOC classes. So those things are kind of sync and in sync, and those are together, and these are the, 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 the pictures. And so we implement the system so that we make sure that w when you operate the, the, the open edX environment, then you make sure your OER content can either put it as a system level, course level, week level, or even unit level. This time it, we put the, a, a reference uh, that the material within the, the, the unit level. So that's part of the, the system as well. So, so that's the, the, the system integration. So make sure that everything comes together. So this is the, the first summary of what we've been talking about, that uh, uh, micro learning, in what stage, in what process when we produce the MOOC that you have to be uh, 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 monitored. AI Tutor, Virtual App, AR, VR, Online, these are the um, promoting the online ac activities with each other. And dashboard, engagement, and uh, uh, those are the, 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 the messages that uh, you, you obtain. Then lastly will be the OERs. So that's the thing. If that's the case, uh, for Taiwan MOOC, that initially, the first, we, we, we were sure that, if, that the idea of pushing MOOCs is learner-centric. Now make sure that's the idea. So everything behind it will support this notion, the, the learner-centric. With that, we have the, we make sure the participant institutions, which would make the MOOCs, they should have experience in industri uh, instructional design, coursework development, and media production. And they should have their own information infrastructure for LMS, database, and uh, some other ARVR support. With that, then, you have a, a, the, the MOOCer teams that submit proposals to the, say, the government or the, the, the supporting agencies. You have that. Then, the, we also require that the the institution, they must have set up the organization to monitor the entire effort. You know, you, 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 do you have the enough ICT infrastructure? Uh, do you have the, some way of supporting the, the innovation? How about your learning habit, your learning culture? Those things are also in consideration to support the MOOCA team. And once they have that, then you put everything on the open edX. That's the, 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 the process. So now we have uh, 63 universities. They all produce MOOCs under the support of the government. And we have almost 700 courses and still, still developing. Just, just every day you can see a new MOOC coming out from some other universities and many, many students. I have this 127 is that we send out a call for proposals from the government and there are 127 universities, they are willing to join, but after the, 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 the final result, we only can accept 63 universities to be part of a job. Hopefully that could be, a, keep on expanding, make sure that's a, 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 a common project for all of the university. But that's the progress up to now. And let me show you Hopefully this works. Hey, this is, oh, here we go. 
Uh, I'm not going to run it on and on and on, starting from 2014 and keep on going all different categories from uh, uh, language speaking, uh, uh, the, the high school students, to medical, to Chinese medicine, to uh, cooking, uh, uh, the, the health, uh, the, the lot, lot of uh, many, many, many others. And I just keep on going. And uh, I think I'll just stop here. <coughs> So if you're talking about the stage of uh, pushing the MOOCs in Taiwan, then we have, uh, we, we split this year, year by year, that uh, in 2014 say, why don't you just produce some courses, you know, to, uh, up to whatever you need, using the, the, the mechanism that I just said, are you prepared, do you have anything in there, then you start your own MOOCs, then we see it. Then the next you will say, hey, you're not just putting MOOCs for your student or for the public, but rather you have to have some mind how this can be applied more. For example, can that fit into a mo mobile device? How that the learning will be different? So you have to consider other applications. In 2016, say, why don't you put in consider the applications along where you submit a proposal? Then it's part of the MOOCs. That's integrated effort. Uh, th that's the, the, the 2016. Then 2017, we say, Hey, it's time that we should have a series of MOOCs, specializations, and ready for program for degree. Although we so far we still haven't any MOOC-based degree program yet, but we're ready for it. And 2019, say all these technologies, all sorts of you know, innovations, why don't you put into the MOOCs? So the different experiments, different simulations are coming out, and they should be from another different, say, off the online, offline, the, the, the experiments that should be coming together. And uh, at, from this year, we say, hey, we've been experiencing so many different uh, ideas, concepts, and they're all different MOOCs. Can we, you know, sort of uh, uh, stream, streamline what's happening? Then we say, we're not talking about MOOCs. Everything is based on MOOCs, but we're gonna see how that will be injected into the teaching or learning in that experience. So it's an education we're talking about. <clears throat> and we picked the 12 universities out of the 63, then they become the leader of this MOOC-based education. Each one has a different uh, emphasis. For example, uh, National, National Open University, uh, many, many courses are in law. And for uh, uh, Ciji University, they are in biotechnology, and some of the hospitality. And National Tsinghua University will say, well, we, we dedicate to science and business, and uh, even USR, National Zhengzhi uh, University. Uh, that they are in the community development. Why don't we do the courses on uh, USR, University Social Responsibility? And there are some entrepreneurship from other universities. So these are the universities who will use their almost seven years experience in, in MOOCs with different applications. Now they are moving forward to, into another arena saying we're talking about education, but we're gonna use the MOOC experience to try to expand that. And that's the case. And if, if we do that, then of course the, the, there are different requirements. As I said, organizational support must be there. And you have to have a governing committee. You need incentive for the faculty. You probably also for the students. And you, you need almost a daily workshops to make sure the students and the instructors, even the, 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 the university, know what's going on in digital learning, in digital education, in MOOCs, in all the supporting uh, facilities. Uh, with the, how do you define the credits? A lot of things, these are just happening that uh, it's not, it's all along with the university, but that's applied to the students. And hopefully we can share that with other universities. So these are the major courses, as I said, uh, Taiwan is an island, a small island, support, you know, surrounded by the open oceans. So you gotta have a course on wind of ocean. You know, uh, people in Taiwan, you gotta know, you, you, I can't say you have to know swim, you know, 100%, but you gotta know your swim, your, your ocean. And the pharmacy is for the, for the uh, safety and, 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 and everything. And 2D animation is because once you have that serious course, you immediately get a job for gaming, for IT industry. That's just uh, so popular that uh, you can get a job right away. And Chinese food, of course, has to be there. 
That's, that's the specialization. And for the high school AP courses, there are almost every university except the, 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 the MOOC based you know, AP courses for scattered around all of the high schools, and that's one. And uh, there are many, many very good general education courses for universities. Then people say, you don't have to be all being the creator of the MOOCs. Why don't you be the user of the MOOCs? So this is a good MOOC. Why you have to recreate it? Reinvent the wheel, I cannot say that. Because of different emphasis, but you don't really have to do that. So we try to apply many, many good general education courses to span that to all the university. You're welcome to take the course, even with the credits, and that's just fine. And so that's the, 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 the effort of a general public so to, to support the, the education. Mm. <clears throat> In Taiwan, all the government employees are required to take at least several hours of training themselves. That's required by law. You know, some in uh, environmental, in uh, energy, or in, in health. Those are the, the areas. So the MOOC comes in just at the right place at the right time. They just take a, a MOOC course. You know, with or without credits, that's, that, that's not an issue. But you go to the, to the, the MOOC, you take that uh, at least you know, six or nine hours, then you report it, then you can take the next series, then keep on you are indulging in the MOOC, uh, the, 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 the world, and that's, that's just, just fine. So that's another benefit of, of applying the MOOCs. The, the, the number of enrollments, that just aligned with that, uh, this is a famous uh, writer, uh, some of the, in the IoT, and these are the, the courses. I said that the, the MOOC no longer massive, and if that's a 3,000 students class, I believe we can, we can get 20 TAs and we can manage that very, very well. So it doesn't to, to be all automatically or you just face the machine and that kind of thing. So MOOC is still be, you know, human centric that hopefully we can get that uh, idea out. Um, the, for the overall cooperation among other overseas platforms, because we are time move, we, we do have some, some courses on, on time move. Hopefully we can have more. And I like to have Thai, move, Thai courses in the Taiwan platform too. You know, that's, that, that's, uh, that's mutual. We're gonna talk about that later. Future and Udemy, and a lot of them are from, uh, from uh, 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 China. And uh, some of the uh, international corporations that were done with the university, many, many are from Vietnam, Vietnam Malaysia, Indonesia, of course, Thailand and uh, the US and uh, some other countries in uh, Canada. And those are the places that uh, uh, inter-university or inter-platform uh, cooperation. So that's about it. MOOCs continue to evolve. And with the original form, expanded the, 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 the emphasis with different technologies and they combined to integrate to, to be a different form of, of MOOC then apply to an even a bigger environment. So we like to see the MOOCs as a form of education that you have your, 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 your everything within the MOOC then hopefully they can work together uh, either domestically, domestically or internationally. That uh, should be a, a case. And for the society, for the company, the, 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 to be competitive, they should have the, the MOOCs for a given line of business and also specialize and from, you know, from top to bottom all the way, you know, for, for example, automobile, for health, you know, a lot of other things, business, that that so should be a different arena of, of MOOCs to, to develop. And that's that's what we, we are, we're doing now, so that it can go from the university to the outside world. And uh, before that, then everything, all the uh, professional training, we all must be aware of the MOOCs, no matter how old, you know, what profession we're in, and that's professional. We, 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 we're living in the world. We keep on uh, learning, teaching ourselves, and, and, and from abroad, the, the, all the resources that we can have. And that should be just not a personal career development, but the, the, the government the, the, the development, that's pretty much everything. So when we say MOOC is a, 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 an education for the democracy, and that's 
pretty, the, 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 maybe that's a high standard we're, we're moving in, but that's, 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 uh, that's the reality. So thank you, that's it. <laughs> Oh, oh, sure. Uh. Well, thank you so much, Professor Liu. Um, it has been remarkable keynote speech to me. It is a big inspiration because we can see that Taiwan MOOC and Thai MOOC have something in common. For mm. example, we think about having MOOC as an OER. We think about how to apply MOOC for practical side of the world. For example, we think of how to utilize MOOC as a spark. We think of how to utilize MOOC as a blended learning mode. I think we can learn a lot from Taiwan MOOC. Mm. With this, um, during your presentation, could you show my computer screen, please? Um, we have four questions up on the discussion board. Sure. And I also would like to invite anyone here who would like to ask question, feel free to, to come up to the microphone nearby you, introduce yourself, who you are, what is your name, where are you from, and then ask the question. But first, um, on this discussion board, let me read it for you, sir. Is there any incentive for teaching staff members to conduct MOOC courses in Taiwan? Yes, uh, it, it has to be there. Because the, 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 the teaching staff, they have their own you know, regular duty. Say, say for us, you, know, you have to teach like nine hours. When it goes tongue tongue to, to, to the MOOCs, they say, hey, uh, how can I either I do both or I reduce my teaching load? So, so these are things are, are, are in common. You have to, you know, to, 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 to answer. Then uh, usually the way is that you, you pro provide uh, Scholarships to 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 uh, you know I can't say the, uh, the 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 salary wide but you get, you add more you know the, the the expense to the to the to the faculty with teaching class either we you do reduce the the teaching load or the, the you you added the extra effort like uh, you're working on on, on the research project so that kind of incentive that putting into the the, the the teachers and if the teacher wants to uh, do one semester another semester and sometimes you can group you know two three small classes in one class and that's even triple that's you you, you only teach one one time so that kind of different uh, uh, maneuver of a different uh, way of uh, of getting MOOCs and that would be the incentive to the to the teachers they they spend uh, less time, uh, but they, 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 they talk to students more, they get more paid, and they can even have, uh, uh, you know, they, they teach that in, 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 say, in summer. They don't have any classes in the fall or spring. Mm -hmm. so, so those are the things that uh, we can have yeah. for the, both of the, 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 the staff and, and the, the teachers. How about the second? Okay, second one, uh, Dr. Chinta, we will read for you. So from the Taiwan experiences, could you please share about, do you have any in particular area where the MOOC is not fit for the learning? Uh, from her experience, MOOC seem fit with everything, every learning. Oh, uh, the MOOC the MOOC cannot be the cure for, for, for the everything. Uh, uh, for example, the this year, I have a problem with the, the, the freshman students that we have a, a required course for introductory to, to, to artificial intelligence. We say, hey, this is a must for the freshmen. You have to understand mm -hmm. what's happening in the world, you know, in the, in the future. But that's a 4,000 freshmen. You know, 4,000 freshmen, if I push them into say, why don't you, you know, get the MOOCs in? Then, 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 then it's a freshman. They don't know nothing yet about the university, about their the future career, about why, why, how can I, you know, what's my, my learning habit in, in, in that kind of environment. Then, then the school say, why don't you try that? I say, no, no, this, some of the experiment you just can't try. You have to lead the way along with the students personally. You know, you have to, your advisors and everything, why don't you use that one as, as a way? So not every course, especially if the courses need more interactions between the, the instructors and the students, as also TAs, and those are the things that, uh, you know, you can just rely on, say, your self-paced. 
the self-directed learning, you need to have already have that kind of habit though, so that you can take that kind of courses. Second, if the teacher themselves, well, it, it, you know, it, it's not used to be the, 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 the way to communicate the, the, the students well, then, then if that's the MOOC course, it still will be, you know, affecting you know, how effective the, the, the course is. So it's not every uh, course will fit. In, in, I know some of the courses like uh, in uh, 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 sociology, in uh, a lot of uh, ph philosophy, a lot of courses are progress and so that a lot of interactions between the students. You have to have enough interactions, asking questions, criticism, and that kind of things must be happening within the class. It can be mutual, but if that's in a, in a uh, sort of a, in a virtual world, then if the communication is not, it's not to say, uh, you know, vivid enough, then I don't think that uh, that course is, 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 is helpful. Unless you have enough after class effort, you know, to help the student. Otherwise, the, the, the course will, will, will not be uh, effective. So, so uh, in, in our university, there are, there are courses they, they don't even consider, say, this is not for MOOCs. Even if for MOOCs, there'll be a future, maybe say, you know, a few years later, once we have enough experiments for that. And so. Thank you, sir. Um, I would like to now open up the floor for um, people here. Anyone here would like to ask a question or have your opinion, please? So many people want to ask, but, <laughs> but, okay. If if nobody here, okay, please, Christian, please, could you? Uh, <laughs> so my friend. Since you are uh, okay, that is microphone. Yeah. Thank you so much for your talk. Um, I have seen your progress. You started in 2014 with the courses, and in 2019 you have now something that is labeled MOOC Embedded Education. Can you maybe explain what is the difference between the courses and now MOOC Embedded Education? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, at, at, at the, in, in, you know, back to uh, uh, 2018, those are in MOOCs. Everything we talked about MOOCs, you know. But we talked about online courses. We talked about e-learning. We talked about a lot of other things. And those usually part of the education as well. But so in the 2019, say, we're not just emphasizing on the MOOCs, but the rather we are emphasizing the teaching style, pedagogy, or how, how those things can benefit the, the, the students. And MOOCs can be one of the forms. So we already have uh, uh, some of the MOOCs that are very, very good, good MOOCs. Yeah, that, that they, they stay there. But if those, some other, as I said, uh, the, the, the MOOC space, maybe say, I say OCW or flip classroom, those things can have different form. Then we should also introduce a vari variety of, 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 of courses it's just to, to boost up the education, but ne not necessarily in the strict MOOC sense in that. So the, what, what I'm saying is the university, they can go their own way. They can, you can do anything, but e-learning is a key. You have to stay in the path of e-learning, but the, the, the MOOC has a, 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 has a, a big stand, uh, percentage, but you still, there, there are some other varieties that you jump in. The, the purpose is just try to make the, the education as effective as possible. So, 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 but from the back experience of the MOOCs, that should be able to help to when you move to a different arena, and that no, uh, whether it's a, a MOOC base or, or not base, but that uh, is not an issue. That you can combine them to make a better effort. That's that's what it is. So 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 what we, originally we talked about education. Then all of a sudden, you know, the e-learning come in. Then we talked about MOOCs. Then we say, hey, it, maybe it's time to go to the the, 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 the original sense of education, w would that be helpful to do that? Or maybe we should stop at, at another middle point, say, say uh, something else, but we're gonna use that. This is also a four-year project. We're gonna see all the way what's happening, and do we have to redirect the direction, and that kind, that kind of thing. And that's, that's what the, I said, the MOOC embedded education. That's embedded in the university, embedded in the education 
and hopefully make it happen. That's, yeah. Thank you so much, Professor Liu, for such a fruitful information you're sharing with us. For some other um, questions that we that have enough time to, um, you know, to to uh, talk with all of these. Um, tomorrow we have the session uh, for Taiwan Moon, mm -hmm. and I'm yes. sure that Taiwan Moon more than welcome to answer all of um, your questions you have posted on the online board. Um, tomorrow Taiwan Moon session will be at room 211 um, on, under the theme of National MOOCs Showcase. Yeah. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, please join me to give a big thank to Professor Liu. Xie mm -hmm. <laughs> I can see that many people keep posting on uh, this discussion board. It has turned to be not only discussion board, but also photo uh, sharing <laughs> session. So please feel free to use this technology. Uh, there is no limitation. Okay, ladies and gentlemen.